Hi, I'm Barton Hammond with the Snowflake app. The other day I was thinking about whether or not I was properly saving and managing all my state in the application with Redux, if I was doing it properly. And one way I thought I could prove that was to be able to save the state and then to load it back in at a later time and have it return to that same state that I had saved. So it took me a little bit of work and I learned a lot. I had some problems and I fixed them. And um, I wanna show you now what, uh, how that works and, and what it does. So I'm gonna start up the simulator. Now to make this work, um, you'll want to be attached to the debugger and you'll want to be, make sure that you're debugging in Chrome. So once you've done that, I'm gonna put the application into a state where the um, the content has error messages just just so we can kind of prove back later that the error messages and the data and everything are um, properly saved the way I do that is I click on this checkbox so I, I show you the information in the text area but I haven't been able to figure out how to copy from there so what I do is I write it out to the console, and that's why you have to have the debugger open and have the, it available. So I now just will, will copy this and take it to my editor, which is Emacs, uh, and I want to make a, um, a JSON class here. And all I'm doing is just saving the information and giving it a name so I can come back to it later if I need to. So let's go back to the app and let's clear it. I'm just reloading there, cleared it out. And now I'm going to go into this data, a control A and delete it, and then go back to my JSON, copy that and paste it here. And if I update the state, I should see all my data and the same error messages. So I feel good about that. Um, the data is right. The error messages are right. So let's go ahead and, and log in with a, a real value here. Mess that one up. Show the password. I think they're the same. They are. So we log in. So now I have a state where I have a session token and I'm storing it locally on the device so that when you come back, you don't have to re log in. But I wanted to make sure that I, that was also in my state. So let's take this um, state here and it's copied now out to the console of the debugger. I'm going to save that into the file and make call this one profile. And save it. And then I want to come back here. Now what I want to do this time is I want to prove so if I if I if I reload this, the session token's still there. So it looks like I'm still logged in. So I want to reset it. And the best way to do that is, is go into the reset content and settings and it kills it. it you lose your whatever content you had there, your, your local storage and everything. And so now I'm starting it back up. So now um, I want to be able to reload that logged in state and prove to myself that I actually have the session token in my state and all the data that I need. Excuse me. Like one of the things you need with working with with parse.com is you need to have the ID of the person that's logged in. Let me show you what I mean. Over here in parse, we have one person logged in or two, I guess now. Um, so the one I just did here, this foobar, this foobar, that is um, has an object ID. So to be able to update this, you have to have that object ID and you also have to have a session token. So let's see if those things got saved properly. 
So I'll open up the console. I'll select everything here. Okay, now this gets in my way. So let me let me do this real quick. Um, I want to toggle. No, it's the wrong one. I want to go to the keyboard, disconnect it, and then reconnect it, and then I'm good to go. So I do a control A, and now I want to go back to my Emacs and select my object that was used for the profile. And if you look here, you can see where there's a session token right here. Okay, so let's see if it gets loaded properly. So I paste that in there. And then I update the state. Update the state. So now um, I'm back into the state. Now to prove that I actually have the session token and the object ID, let's update the name. There. It's updated. Let's refresh parse. Okay. So we see the name change there. So what this is proving is that it's possible with Redux to manage all of your state in one store and to be able to save that state off and bring it back without using a database. This is all local. This is all within the app running on the device. So I want to look at the code a little bit. So the first thing we want to do is start off in the header because that's where the, um, the uh, mark is. So when we show this mark and we click on it, we do this update button press here, and that's going to come up here, and that, excuse me, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for when I just open it, when I click on the mark, when I press the mark, um, I want to go get that state first. So we'll say on, go call, on get state, and, and then we're going to toggle the property to show it or not show it. So we want to know where where is that, what is that on get started? So the header is contained within the um, login uh, container. So let's find login and then let's find header. And when we want to get the state, we're passing it the actions get state. Now, where did we get this action? Up on the top of login, we're actually importing two, two actions. We're importing auth and global. And what happens is when we are mapping our actions, we're, we're adding both auth actions and global actions, and, and they're going to be referenced by what's called actions. So this particular one that we're looking for, the, um, the get current state, actions called get state is actually a global. So let's go to the reducers in global and we'll find the action. We have get state. Now that's going to go into the global reducer. So in the global reducer we have a get state. So the first thing we're doing is we're using the store. Now if you've, if you've worked with Redux that that is a uh, the, the store is what has all your state. It's the Redux store. It's it's it has the date, the, the data that is accessible through this get state. So the question is, well, how did the store end up on this in in this in the state itself? Well, what I did there is back in the native, the 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 main class that we go to. See down the bottom here, it was where we do the snowflake. Um, when I am creating the configuring the store, what I do is I dispatch set the store. So I, I create the store and then I dispatch to the store itself a copy of the store. So where does that go? Well, again, that goes to the um, global actions. And we'll see where it says set store. And of course, that goes to the global reducer. And the set store does nothing more than take the payload and set it into a variable called store. So now, again, back on the mark, we've clicked, we are doing get state, and now we are here. So using the store, get the state of the store. So now we have a nice 
um, immutable store because that's all the components I'm using. What we're doing here is we're taking all of this, these, these different auth, device, profile, global, and we're converting them to JSON. And I'm removing the store from the global um, object. I don't want to, it'll way, otherwise it'll be uh, recursive and that's not going to work well. So I get the new state ready and I send in whatever the payload is. The payload is to, to, to be true or false is do I show the state or not? And so I set it to whatever they sent me and then I set the current state to this state. So now I've got the state from the store. How do I get all these components to, to update? Well, I need to call the, it's going to um, call, well, we'll see here in a second. Um, getting a little ahead of myself. So, what, uh, let me think here for a second. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So back in the in the render here, we're going to be taking that state and um, displaying it. Sorry for that pause there. I don't know how to pause the video recorder, and I don't want to start from the beginning again. So I've got the state back now, and it the the show state property is is correct. It's true. I'm getting the state that I just brought back here, and what I want to do now is I, I put that into the text input. Now, when that text input is pasted into with the, the state that you're, you're saving or restoring, eventually you're going to push this button here, the form button, and it's going to call on update. Now, this is going to also go to the global action, and that action is set state. And so all it does is pass that request to the reducer and the set state is taking the variable the payload which is that JSON that we put in it parses it and finds the user and finds out what, whether we should show, show the state it says no and the current state doesn't worry about it now what's interesting that's that's all that's going on there it's like okay well then what about everybody else well that's where it gets kind of fun let's go look at the auth reducer and at the bottom, he's performing the set state also. So just because you created it as a global um, constant doesn't mean that the another reducer can't work with that same constant. And if you ever put breakpoints in the multiple reducers, you'll see that what Redux does is call each of the reducers passing in the state and the payload or the action. So in the auth reducer, when he sees set state, he takes the payload, he parses it and gets the auth form, and now basically he's reloading himself. He knows what his record looks like. If you look down here at the initial state, it's a re here's all the values that he needs to restore. So what I wanted to do was um, have each of the reducers restore themselves. So if we go to the device, the device has a set state here and it, the values that are appropriate for it, it's restoring those and the same way with the profile. We go down to the bottom and the profile is updating its state. Now there's probably a way to do this with some mag magic. I could not figure out how to do it with the immutable to take the very same JSON that I got from it and put it right back into immutable. Uh, I don't know if anybody figures that out, let me know, but I'm doing it through brute force. And it just means that each reducer has to remember or have the ability to perform the updates to its own state on the set state. So if I add a new object, I just need to make sure that I add this set state and refresh itself. Otherwise, um, I'll be able to, from here as I grow out this application or I use it as a basics for some other application, I'll be able to save the state off and, you know, do something. Now, maybe some of the 
practical purposes would be that when a user is running the application and they have some kind of um, exception, maybe it's possible to save the state of the application and, and send it to some server somewhere that you can get access to and then load it up in your um, testing environment and bam, you should be able to reproduce that error. Uh, at least that's the thought. So anyway, I hope that um, was enlightening for you and useful and hope that um, you uh, can use it in your applications as you go forward. Thank you very much.